For traders that have emailed and asked, the links for the free downloads are in the description box below. Just click on the link or copy and paste and put that in your browser. The four-step method to high performance trading and the seven-step daily routine for high performance traders create the rituals, the mindset, and the winning attitude to master the markets. Bulletproof yourself with your daily routine and your habits. Force yourself to be getting better, 1% better every single day. How good can you get, traders? Again, the free downloads, the links are down below. They're both free courses. Let's get started. Good day, traders. Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. Continuing our discussion on the day count and the different types of trades in the sessions. Yesterday, we talked about day one Monday, and we talked about classical charting principles. And again, going back and reviewing that, the classical charting principles for me has a very important understanding about risk reward because there's geometrical range expansions of these structures. I primarily like to focus on rectangles and that consolidation when those patterns complete uh, for breakout traders can be, uh, for example, many breakouts fail. And those breakouts of geometrical ranges can often be reversal trades for false break reversal trades. We can have explosive breakouts that we saw on gold today that becomes a range expansion with the trend, a trend trade that becomes a range expansion. And so these are the types of uh, understandings that will help you to understand, number one, that when you get into a trade, you don't have to hold on to it. Uh, and think you're going to get 150 pips and thinking it's all about how many pips can I get. It's about understanding which trade setups are going to be, number one, reproducible, but also uh, the types of trades they are will help you determine size. So some people misunderstand the term scalping. Scalping can still be fairly lucrative in terms of size. It's all relative to your account. It doesn't mean that you don't put anything on it. It means that when you have a reproducible sizable scalp as your results dictate and you have uh, textbook best trade setups you can trade those as big as you want now there are sizable trade setups three day setups three levels of rise uh, coiled movements compressed markets again trend trades there are certain sizable setups that means I will significantly scale into those. So a great question from a trader is, how do you get into trades? I repeat this over and over again. I never go full size in any trade. I always scale into anything where I'm adding positions. I add them as my thesis is confirmed, or if it's a sizable move and it's accelerating, I will add, add, add fairly aggressively. Now, another question from a trader regarding a trade that they took uh, last week at the high of the week why it didn't work. I cannot answer any questions about trades that you've taken, why they don't work. All I can ask you is what setup did you take? Uh, why, you, why you take a trade and w how it plays out, I have no you know, awareness of whatsoever. Um, if you take a best playbook trade setup and it doesn't work, that's part of trading. You manage your, your risk on the trade and you, you get stopped out. That's just part of trading. If you've taken a trade and you're asking me why it didn't work, what did you do wrong? I cannot answer that. You can only answer that yourself. The question I always have for you, though, is what setup did you trade or did you just get into the market because it was at the high or low? Again, repeating that, the timings, the session, the behavior of price, all of that are relative to a best trade setup. Just getting in and then wondering why it didn't reverse is not... A trade setup that is just taking a position in the market and hoping it goes your way and there's a again I repeat a big difference so Tuesday day two we're gonna look at uh, just today we'll look at the week on the currencies uh, somebody asked me about can I go over the day count on the weekends with certain currencies or whatever I don't trade on the weekend I can't answer any of that that's completely irrelevant to what I'm doing I trade Monday to Friday. I'm mainly looking for one trade, one or two trades in my U.S. session window. And, you know, 90% of the time I'm done in that hour. That is how I trade. I don't try to, you know, figure out what other things are doing in anything else. I'm just looking for setups in that basket of instruments that I follow. I try to identify one or two that are the easiest and simplest to identify and then watch how they behave in that first hour. 
And then if I have a trade, I take the trade. As simple as that. Entry, stop, loss, target. So again, we Tuesday, day two, we potentially could have high of day, low of day, or high of week, low of week opportunities. Day one, day two, we talked yesterday that day one establishes the high and the low. Now, if it breaks other structures, for example, weekly high and low, that may be a trigger getting early shorts in or early longs or continuing a move, continuing a move. So we're going to talk a bit more about the day count. People are still confused. Can Friday be day one? I, I talked about all this before. Day one is always, there's two types of day ones. Monday to Friday is day one to five. But the first day that a daily high is broken and breakout traders are triggered into the market, on the upside or the downside, we now have day one longs or day one shorts in the markets. So I'm going to run through the pairs and we'll just take a look, a look at a couple trades that I took today. Reiterating Monday, Tuesday, Monday formed our initial high low for the week on the Canadian dollar. Now, again, I talk about sessions and timings. So uh, I'm trading the U.S. session. So when I come to the U.S. session, again, if I'm looking at different pairs, or, you know, U.S. Canadian may have a stronger tendency to trade in the U.S. session, but we may have other trades during the week based on the template as we had on Asia on Friday. We'll put our weekly separator on here. Uh, Friday had an Asia session trade. It had a London trade and had a U.S. payrolls trade. Uh, again, so today we have our high and our low on Monday. We have a lower high that formed at the end of the U.S. window. Now, the reason why that high is significant is because they stayed inside of that for the entire day prior to the U.S. window. So again, talking about geometrical shapes, that forms a rectangle inside of our high of the week. We have a range, a coiled consolidation. I repeat, I talked about this. Large moves come out of consolidated markets. When a market coils sideways above a low or below a high, it is coiling to make an explosive move. Now, if somebody says to me, well, is this below the high or the low? <laughs> um, okay, our peak formation is up. We're coiling sideways above the low because it's getting ready to explode. Now, if it had broken out and pulled back, that may be a trap for a short squeeze. You have to understand when a market is going to reverse. When it breaks out and we're still on the front side of that move, why would you want to try and counter trend a market that's going higher and higher? Why wouldn't we be looking for session trades, maybe long with the trend, maybe short in a session, a game timing window? I'm looking to counter trend a large move at the high of the week, not on its way up. But after we've established that this market now potentially is reversing. So if you're counter trending an explosive range expansion, be prepared that this market, once it breaks out, if we've come out of a, a, a consolidated market, we could be doing a full range expansion. So again, we could put, call that a high and a low. We could have a market that's coiled, built up a consolidation and, and explodes does one expansion, two expansions before possibly reversing back into breakout traders. This could be a three day process. We can see this over three sessions, but do not counter trend a market that has exploded out of a range in a consolidated market in a two day setup. And again, gold is the classic example of that. Uh, I can't zoom this in on the hourly to maybe just blow that up a little bit better but again monday sets our high and our low did not break the high of the week of friday and we had a large consolidation day one day two heading into our u.s 12 candle window the low of the day was in the london session so low of the day traders possibly had an opportunity this was a golden trend trade opportunity for traders who are that were trading gold today several traders hit this trade this is a scalable scalable trade setup 
Again, coming back to understanding the range expansions, we've done two full expansions. We're still up top above that. We may even get a third expansion, which indicates the strength of this move if we put our hourly chart on there. Coming back to looking at the overall structure of this market, we have a larger consolidation that this market came out of from the high Wednesday two weeks ago. Not saying that the market is going to complete this move, but it is possible we could have a full range expansion of this rectangle from the previous week, a high-low rectangle. I'll just zoom this in for a range expansion all the way targeting possibly up towards that last week of September. No idea we could have a pullback before it does that and a retest. No idea. But point I'm making is do not counter trend a market that has come out of a coiled consolidation. So Monday, Tuesday formed our Monday formed our high low Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, our initial balance. And now we have a geometrical range expansion targeting possibly a third expansion of that range. Peter Brand often talks about patterns within patterns. So this smaller consolidated rectangle at the top of the breakout was a golden opportunity for trend traders to be positioned into the market, targeting a range expansion, possibly holding on other time frame traders, holding on for that full expansion, that second expansion up towards that uh, 17,300 area. Again, the indexes, uh, S&P and NASDAQ specifically gave very nice high of day, high of week scalp trades into the open of the New York session. Uh, I took the NASDAQ myself. I thought it was the cleanest of the three charts. We'll take a look at that. So again, the thesis for me was market had proceeded to auction higher in the London session, making a high of day. And we had a higher low of the London window that put in our low of the London session. And when we came into that first hour of the New York window, again, some traders uh, levels may be a bit different depending on their broker. We proceeded to put a low in first, a low of the first hour, higher low. So we have a high of the day and a low of the session. The market proceeded to work its way up and in the second hour, break the high. So again, I talk about the psychology of understanding what actually happens. The new hour breaks the high of the previous hour and the high of the day. That gets other time frame traders into the market. It also gave us a little M structure that broke down and consolidated and five minutes before the market opened, locked in our little micro head and shoulders with an engulfment. It also broke the front side of our move. So we had a little micro trend line break, retest of the high, consolidation underneath the high and the engulfment. I entered in on this trade confident that the market would blow quickly through the low. That was the thesis. The, again, somebody, a lot of traders said, oh, it's quite volatile sometimes on the open, and that's correct. But it depends on the pattern of the trend on the day and the day of the week and where we're at. If you're inside, you'll tend to see a lot of wicks and volatility. But if you're at the extremes, the thesis always is that they have traders trapped. They have traders trapped either up high or down low. Now you'll notice the first hour takes traders right back up to the high. The second hour triggers breakout traders. So we have hourly traders, 15 minute, four hour, whatever in the market maybe breakout high a day U.S. session traders as well. We know their stops are going to be down below that, that first hour, that first hour. So this was an easy 45, 50 pip blow off straight to the low in the first 15 minutes that again worked one push, two push, three pushes into the uh, end of the fifth, first 15 minutes of the New York Open for the explosive coiled reversal three pushes again and another coil for the continuation long. So traders have asked, why don't you go long? I'm short biased. I like to scalp and take these trades. Um, there are other long trades that I look, like to take. This just isn't part of my playbook. 
Uh, and I know there are traders who like to wait that hour and look for these coiled reversals. I like to look for that on oil sometimes. Uh, oil tends to take three hours sometimes or towards two and a half hours to coil a market. And then you can see some seriously explosive moves. Um, with the indexes, I'm happy to get an opportunity like this day one, day two, high of week, low of week, and take those for scalps. And again, those are scalable. Those are scalable in size. They reproduce over and over again. This is a classic day two, high of week, high, low of session trade opportunity. So again, plenty of trades. Go and review your charts day two, day two. Understand what you are looking for. You're looking for specific setups. You are not just looking to get in when it breaks a high or a low. Do you have a trend trade? Is it a reversal trade? Is it a scalp? Is it sizable? Which session are you trading and what is the timing of the session and the importance? The London Equity Hour open, New York Session Equity Hour open, very important to certain markets. So again, you get a breakout, a large range expansion. Don't be looking to try and sell the high because it's at the high of the week. Uh, maybe you are going to get a trade up here, but look for the trade in the session. If this is a trend trade on day two, be prepared to know, understand that what that looks like, how you could scale into a move like this, and this may not come back. If this was a Friday night, it probably wouldn't come back. Most likely we'll see some sort of pullback towards the end of the session, but I would not be counter-trending this market on day two. Hopefully that makes sense, traders. Keep it simple. We'll go through day three setups tomorrow, and we'll keep going through the week. Day one, day two, day three. Have a great day, and may the markets go with you.